Today we're going to cover regular expressions. Hello, my name is Richard Kirshner with the Simply Learn team. That's www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. What are regular expressions? A regular expression is a set of characters that helps one identify strings of a specific pattern. So as we dig into this, we're going to work in our PyCharm interface. Let me go ahead and pull that up and create a new project. And here we are in there. And let's go ahead and call this slash RE for a regular expression. And we'll go ahead and create that. It takes it just a moment to create that. And it's kind of interesting because the history of regular expression is that it came from a number of other languages. Primarily Perl and people who worked on Unix way back when, they needed these codes coming in when they came into Python. And so dealing with that as far as uh, language and searching for different expressions in there, that's where it came from. And, and it's a really good tool for searching through your strings and doing all kinds of work uh, cleaning different string formats, which we'll look at in here. Let's go ahead and start by creating a new scratch file. And we want this as a Python scratch file. And of course, in my interface, I have the font up extra large, so hopefully you'll be able to see that as we type it in. And we'll go ahead and import re. That's all you got to do to bring the package in. And it is part of the Python basic packages, so there's no installing of the regular expression model. It's already part of your Python package. And let's go ahead and take a look at some of the, there's like a whole set of code that goes into string searches. And let's take a look at those in our slides, and then we can quickly go through those and show you what that looks like in code, and then look at some more advanced ways of using it. So the, some of the symbols for writing a regular expression is the asterisk. The preceding character is repeated zero or more times. That's what that represents. The plus, the preceding character is repeated at least once. Brackets, the preceding character is repeated as many times as mentioned in the braces. Then you have period represents a single occurrence of any character except new line. It's important to remember that. And that's very common when you're reading files in. You're looking for that carriage return or the new line character. Uh, the question mark preceding a character is optional. And then we have our uh, tilde, which specifies that the match must start at the beginning of the string. And the dollar sign specifies the match must occur at the end of the string. The square brackets matches one out of the all the characters within the brackets. And we'll see that a lot when we get into the more advanced uh, setup. And then you can hear, see down here where we kind of mix and match, and it matches any one character except those not in the brackets. So that's what the last one is, is the opposite of the square brackets. And then we have backward slash D matches a digit. Backward slash W matches a alphanumerical character. Backward slash S matches a white space character. Um, and that brings out all the basic ones. And let's go ahead and we're going to switch to code and kind of stream through these real quick so you can see what we're talking about. And then we'll look at some more advanced uses for this. So let's start by uh, putting in a string. And we'll just use one that says uh, ABCD4 Computer 765 Python 687. Kind of just a mix match of characters and words going in. And let's take our pattern. And we'll set this equal to computer. We want to store our solution under match. Because uh, we're looking for matches equal re dot find all and then we have our string we're searching, we have our pattern. And then we go ahead and take this, and let's just go ahead and print this out and see what happens when we print match. And let's take and run. Our scratch, oh, put it as scratch too, I must already have a scratch in there. And you can see down here, uh, we get returned computer. Not so exciting, because it really doesn't tell us anything that we need to know, other than um, we have an array with computer in it. So instead of just looking for a word, let's start using some of those um, hot characters they used. And there's a, a couple things going on in here. Uh, first of all, you'll see here we have the brackets. And if you remember from our slide, the bracket means it has to match one of the characters within it. Okay, so that's the first thing we got going there. And then with this format, you can do A to Z, all lowercase, capital A to capital Z. So this, this little part right here tells us that it's going to be any one of these characters has to match something in the, um, in the word phrase. Uh, so we're looking for those patterns. And then we've added another symbol on here, the plus sign. And the plus sign means the preceding character is repeated at least once. And then finally we're going to add an R in front of our string. And this is telling it that it's a raw string. And that's really important because if we had some character, uh, maybe we had 
underscore in this is an escape key so if you had a regular screen this would register as a carriage return or a return uh, line if you put the R in front it ignores any of these escape keys so any of these characters won't affect how it runs if you put that in there you'll get it if you don't use a raw and you have a, a backward slash you can have all kinds of problems so the R just means that this is a raw string that's all that means and then we're going to do the same thing we're going to do a find all patterns in the string and let's go ahead and run this and see what our output is and you can see in here we end up with ABCD computer and Python and this is what we'd expect because we have our ABCD here is all in the letters so there's at least one letter in there same thing with computer same thing with Python it makes an interesting question what happens if I add um, let's take the space away and just see what happens if I do ABCD 4 so we'll go ahead and run that and again you'll see that it's only showing you strings with letters in it so it gets rid of anything um, that doesn't have letters and this is where this plus sign comes in is it only brings back letters that are next to each other so if I have the space itself isn't going to register the 4 isn't going to register if I did something like this ABCD computer and we run it scratch 2 we see that's all one word I'm going to add the, the letter the number four in there and let's go ahead and run that and we run that you'll see again it splits it it doesn't care whether it's a space a four a period long as it's not part of this set uh, lowercase a to z uppercase a to z that's what this plus sign does is it limits it in this case we did our letters we can also do our numbers zero to nine and it's the same way let me go ahead and run that and now you'll see we have the four seven six five six eight seven so it's the same numbers on here and I even left these compressed together because 4 doesn't have another number next to it uh, there has to be at least two in a row it's going to register as just 4 but you can see here 4 7 6 5 6 8 7 so we've now pulled all the numbers out of there and then if we wanted to do both letters or both words and numbers we can do this two ways if you combine what we just did on this and did uh, A to capital Z uh, we can run this and you'll see we now have uh, ABCD for computer 765 Python 687. Now another format you can do with this to get the same answer will look more like this, where we have a period, we have our brackets with not space, and a plus sign afterward. And if you remember, the period represents a single occurrence of any character except new line. And then we have specifies that the match must start at the beginning of the string. And if you do a tilde dot dot matches any one character except those not in the brackets. This is actually a different one. What I meant is this one right here. Specifies the match must start at the beginning of the string. So we're looking at a string that has characters at the beginning. And let's go ahead and go back over there and take a look at that syntax. So we have our period, our brackets, our little caret, and the plus sign. And let's go ahead and run this. And we get the same answer, but notice a change here. This answer is slightly different than the last one. This one has the space preceding it. So it says, hey, if we don't have characters that are matching, when they stop matching at the end, that's when we have the break. And we can see this if we do, let's do this, 4A, and just run that. Uh, you can see that it's looking for those white spaces to split things apart. And if we take the A out, and let's just out of curiosity, what happens when I do A, B, C, D, 4? You'll see that it now just groups that together as one word. And we would have gotten the same thing if we had done this with the uh, A through Z, capital A through capital Z setup. The difference is, is this now puts the white space at the beginning because that's how this is looking for that blank space there. And I'm getting a little tired of this string of data, so let's create a slightly different string. In this case, we're using, if you do the three single brackets after string, it then registers this all as part of the string. So it includes the um, line carried return here, banana, orange, peach, avocado, cherries. We'll go a little fruity on you, switch up from uh, just random words. And let's take our uh, print M. We'll just iterate through match. So let's do 4M in match. Of course, indent the print. And this is just going to print them each as a single line as opposed to printing them like we have down here as an array. That's all that's doing, just changing that up a little bit. Uh, have a little fun here. And let's take our pattern. We're going to do our uh, string, our exact string. And on this, we're just going to do dot star s. So what the heck is going on here? So we have the dot represents a single occurrence of any character except new line. Preceding character is repeated zero or more times. And then we hit the letter S. And so we do this. Let me go ahead and run this and let's see what comes out. 
And we'll end up with cherries. Why? Because we're looking for any character does not a carriage return. It has whatever characters in front of it, one or more characters in front of it. This is a wild card. Asterisk is always a wild card. And then S, we're looking for something that ends in S, basically. It says, how many other characters that are not a carriage return ending in S? And if you look at the words, the only one we have that follows that is cherries. So when we run this, we end up with cherries. And then we're going to change this up. We're going to use word boundaries. And let's go back and remember what the uh, forward uh, or backward slash B stands for. So we're looking for boundaries, and then we did all the vowels. A-E-I-O-U, a holder, and then the plus sign. And let's go ahead and run that in our scratch. And we end up with an interesting uh, array. And this is why we started doing the 4M and match. You can see what's going on in here. We have a pattern. We're looking for any pattern that has the A-E-I-O-U. So the preceding character, it has to be a character. It must contain at least one of these characters. So if one of these characters are in there, then we're going to create the pattern, or it's going to pull that match out. And we can see here we end up with apple, orange, avocado, because each one of them starts with an A, E, I, O, or U. And then by adding the boundary tags, it separates them into words. And let me show you what that looks like. The, the best to understand how the boundary tags work, well, let's just remove the boundaries. And let's run it without the boundaries and see what happens. And we run it without the boundaries, we end up with apple, anana, orange, each, avocado, Aries. So it doesn't care that there's no letters involved in there. And if we do just the last boundary, this is always fun to do and play with this, you'll see that the it now keeps the boundary on the right-hand side. So it says, hey, there's a line return here. There's some kind of beginning or end. And of course, if we put the original boundary back in at the front and run it, uh, we end up with apple, orange, avocado. So we're looking for those that begin with A-E-I-O-U. Now, as much as I like my fruit, you know, my apples, oranges, and cherries, let's look at some data that we can actually more apt to apply this to instead of just fruit. Let's say we're going through and we're looking for email. So we're getting a little bit more advanced. We have a list of information that came in. Maybe you've scraped this off of a web page, and now you want to find out which one of these is an email. And if you look at it as a human, we can easily see that we have a string an at symbol, in this case gmail.com, and that represents an email. And we go down here, we have another one, which is tigacharm 56 h at hotmail.com. That's probably an email. And then we go down here to hfg123h at AOL. Well, it's missing like the .com, so this is not a valid email. And then obviously this is the last one has no validity to as an email in any form. So what does that pattern look like? How do we generate that pattern? For this, we're going to do a totally different series here. We're going to look for A to Z plus 0 to 9. So it has to start with an A to Z, but they could have a number after it. It could also have be followed by A to Z. And if you notice, we're actually dealing with all lowercase right now. Obviously, uh, do an uppercase also here, A to Z, capital A to capital Z. So we're looking at that it has to start with a letter, because that's a valid email starts with a letter. And then it can have all kinds of numbers in there. It could have, wild, you know, kind of a wild character going on in there, A to Z, unknown number of characters, so it represents the wild characters on there. The plus sign just says we're starting with an A to Z. Then it's going to have an at symbol, then also A to Z, plus scoop period dot com. So it's going to end with the dot com. That's how we're going to read this. And this, when we send this in there, even though the string itself we're sending has no escape characters, but it's still, as far as a pattern recognition, this is going to be for the uh, RE, an escape character that says, hey, this period is part of what we're looking for. So just like your regular string, you can use it to represent in here the actual character. Um, if it is already being used as one of the regular expression characters. And we go down here, we go ahead and run this. Let me go ahead and take this and run it. Scratch 2. We end up with the two emails that we said were probably emails. So again, this is a great way to scrape a web page. And you can see that we can pull the emails off of that scraping or whatever strange string we got coming in. Now, at this point, if you're scraping web pages, you might need to find markers on the web page and know what's going on. Go a little deeper. So we're going to do find iter for iterate. We're going to find the iteration. And uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and do this for M in match M. There we go. And let's go ahead and run this and see what this shows. And again, this is going to show us a lot more information. That's what the find iter means, or find iterate. And you can see it returns down here. Instead of just returning the emails we're looking for, it also says, hey, this email spanned from 1 to 16. So here we go. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then 15, it always includes there. When you're, you're looking at these things and you see 1 to 16, that means the placeholder is at 1 and the end character is at 15. That's always important to remember on that. And then we have our match, and it shows you what the actual match is that comes out. And the same thing with the second one. It goes through 27 up to 51. And again, we have the match and the actual email it's showing. So you get a little bit more information if you're tracking where it's coming out of these documents and stuff like that that you're scraping off the web or wherever you're pulling these emails. This is what the span is. And if we wanted the just the span, we could change this to m.span brackets. And if we run this, you'll see we get the 116, the 2751. So it just gives us the location. And of course, you could also do uh, m.match. We can run that. And this is interesting because they expect you to either do the match and find all. So you can't actually do an m.match. It's only valid for the span. There we go. Run that. And you, again, you can see the 116.27.51. So let's get out of the emails. That was kind of fun. And let's give a new set of data. In this case, we have Sam Carr 2453 Alexa John 90. Uh, and we notice we have a capital S for Sam and a capital J and a capital A and then cars lowercase and then the number 2453. And let's say you're working on a project where you've been asked not to find the names of the people. Uh, you're doing word counts. So you got to remove all the proper names out. So let's say we want to get rid of the names in here. And the pattern for that, again, we have our breaks on each end. A to Z, A to Z, and the plus sign. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use sub and then we're going to replace anything that's not in the pattern with an empty set. So this stands for substitute. And we'll change this to in string, just for um, the sake of uh, uh, making it easier to read. Sometimes we do that. And let's go ahead and print out our in string. And let's see what this prints out on here. We're going to run it. There we go. And if we come down to the run window, split the window up a little bit, uh, we'll see we still have car, because it doesn't have a capitalized first letter. We've removed Sam, Alexa, and John. So we've substituted that with a null value. So they're still here, but they just no longer have any letters in the string. That's what the substitute does. This is a quick way to sort out the names on a, like I said, you have a document and you're trying to tokenize it, but you don't want to count names because they're proper names. Or maybe you're doing the opposite. You want to pull the names out and do it the other way. Either way, you can see how this is a useful tool for really digging in deep and finding the patterns in your strings and pulling that information out of whatever document you're working on. This concludes our regular expressions. Again, thank you for joining us today with Simply Learn. That's www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. If you have any further questions, feel free to post them down below in the YouTube questions or come visit us on our website where we'll be happy to help you. Happy learning and have a great day. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.